Hey, this is Mr. Jaynes. In this video, we're going to talk about classifying quadrilaterals with coordinates or coordinate geometry. Before we get started, we're going to need a quick refresher on how to find distance and slope on a coordinate grid. To start, in these two boxes, write down how you would find distance between two points on a coordinate grid and how you would find slope between two points on a coordinate grid. Don't just write an explanation, actually write down the formulas that you would use. Please pause the video now to write these two things down. Uh, the answers will be up in three, two, one. So here we have uh, the distance formula to find distance between two points, and so you can use this. Um, but I actually prefer to use this second one, Pythagorean theorem, um, when I'm finding distance. And we'll all use these in just a second. As for slope, there's a few ways we can find it. You can use the slope formula right here, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's very formulaic. I actually prefer to think of this as rise over run or change y over change x. And we'll practice using these in just a second. But make sure you've written them down in your paper uh, so that we can apply them for the next few problems. Again, in the beginning, this is just a warm up to refresh us on how to find slope and distance. So if you feel like you're good with slope and distance and you don't need any extra help, try to do questions one, two, and three, and even four uh, without any help. So if you can do them, pause the video now and try one, two, three, and four. If not, if you're having a little trouble with slope and distance, keep watching. So, number one, is the slope of the line above positive or negative? Let's take a look at this line first. Well, this line is decreasing, which means it's going to have a negative slope. So the slope of this line is negative. Okay. Again, because it's decreasing. What is the actual slope of the line? We can find the slope a few ways. One way we can do this is by labeling the points. Uh, this would be 0, 4, and this point right here would be uh, 6, 1. And using the slope formula, right, that's the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 that we talked about before. So you can even label your points if you'd like, right? Uh, we call this maybe x1, y1, x2, y2. Then we can go ahead and, and plug these into our formula. 1 minus 4 over 6 minus 0. 1 minus 4 is negative 3. 6 minus 0 is 6. We have negative 3 over 6. Uh, can we simplify that? We can to, uh, let's see, 1 over 2. And a negative divided by a positive is a negative. So our slope is negative 1 half. However, I'd prefer to do this using rise over run. It's a little bit easier for me. I take a look at this, this line. And to get from the first point to the second point, I have to go down 1, 2, 3, so negative 3, in the y direction. And I have to go over 6, positive 6 in the x direction. And so again, my slope is just my rise, the negative 3, over the run, 6, which again can be simplified to negative 1 half. And I prefer to use that method, although whether you want to use the formula or rise of run is completely up to you. What about number 3? What is the distance between the endpoints? Now for this, you have a choice, just like with slope. You can either use the distance formula or Pythagorean theorem. I'll show you how to do both as a quick review. So, distance formula. We would have to take these points right here, uh, 0, 4, 6, and 1, and plug them into this formula right here. The square root of the whole thing, x squared minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So let's just try that out really quickly. Uh, so it's going to look like this. The distance between these two points is the square root of uh, 6 minus 0. Remember, that's my x1 and my x2, um, or x2 minus x1, plus 1 minus 4 squared. Again, my y's. Let's see, 6 minus 0 is 6. 1 minus 4 is negative 3. Don't forget to bring down the squares and the giant square root. Uh, 6 squared is 36. Negative 3 squared is 9. Remember, negative times a negative is a positive. Uh, 36 plus 9 is 45. Bring down the square root. And can we simplify the square root? We can. Uh, the square root of 45 breaks down into the square root of 9 and the square root of 5. And so simplified, this is 3 square root 5. Of course, if you want to do that in a calculator, you could. If you just search calculator on Google, you get the Google calculator. And if we type in 3 square root of 5, we get 6.7082 and so on. Let's round that to two decimal places and call that 6.71. So either 3 radical 5 
or 6.71 as a decimal approximation will work. However, I prefer to use Pythagorean theorem. I think it's a little easier, especially when you have the graph right in front of you. How do you do that? Well, all you've got to do is think of this side, of this kind of slope triangle we've made, as your, one of your legs. So negative 3 is one of our legs, and 6 is the other leg. And we're going to try and find the length of the hypotenuse. We'll call that c. And so for Pythagorean theorem, we can just write down, we've got negative 3 squared plus uh, 6 squared equals c squared. We already know that negative 3 squared is 9. 6 squared is 36 equals c squared. Sum them together and you should get 45 equals c squared. Take a square root to cancel out that the square in the, of the c. And we get the square root of 45, which simplifies, as we know, to 3 square root 5 or to 6.71. As you can tell, I prefer to use rise over run for slope and Pythagorean theorem for distance, and I don't prefer to use any of the formulas. It's up to you completely which one you use. However, the formulas require you to memorize them, or the other ones are a little more intuitive and a little less to memorize. At this point, if you already haven't, go ahead and try to answer questions 1, 2, and 3 for this uh, line right here. The full answers with, with work will appear in 3, 2, 1. Make sure you've actually tried this one. All right, here are the answers. So here are the answers for the second graph. The slope is positive. You can see that it's increasing right here. Uh, the slope of the line ends up being 2, once you simplify. And the distance between the endpoints ends up being 2 radical 5 in simplest radical form, or 4.47. Now that we're a little more comfortable with slope and distance, let's answer number 4, a more conceptual question. 4. Why is it that you can measure slope using two points, but for distance you must use the two endpoints? Here's what I mean by that. In this line right here, that we, we talked about earlier, you can actually find the slope of that line using any two points. Like the slope from here to here is going to be uh, negative at half. The slope from here to here is going to be negative at half. The slope from the beginning to the very end is going to be negative at half. However, if you try to find the distance between these two points and then the distance between the full, whole thing, there'll be different distances. Why is that? Why is that we can take slope between any two points on the line, whereas distance we have to use the two endpoints? Think about it for a second. Jot something down for number four. Pause now, and you'll see the answers appear in three, two, one. Did you actually try and try this? Probably not. Please try it. Now, here are the answers. Here's what I've written. Slope measures direction and is always the same because the rise and the run will be proportional between any two points on the same line. What I mean by that is you can always simplify the slope to the same value. What that means is that in a line like this, if your slope is something like, I don't know, negative uh, 3 plus 6, that could simplify to a slope between a different two points, right? The slope between any two points on this line is proportional, right? Such as 3 to 6 has the same proportion as 1 to 2. However, distance measures length. While the order and sign of rise and run won't matter for distance, the values do. That means is that in, in a graph like this, let me do a quick erase here, in a graph like this, okay, the, the sign, uh, like going up, going down, left, right, doesn't quite matter for distance, right? All that matters is that this 3 and this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? Those numbers, those magnitudes matter. For example, I could just as easily go from here up to here and have the same exact distance because I'm still moving 6 in one direction and 3 in another. The slope would change, but the distance wouldn't. And that is how we can measure slope using any two points, but for distance we have to use the end points. We're about to go ahead and start putting quadrilaterals on the coordinates, but one last thing we need to review, 5, 6, and 7. If you think you know the answer to 5, 6, and 7 right now, please pause the video and give them a try. The answers will come up in 3, 2, 1. So, 5, how would you check to make sure sides are parallel? Sides that are parallel will have the same slope. That makes sense because they're going in the same direction. They've got that same level of steepness. How would you check to make sure two sides are perpendicular? They form a 90 degree angle. Remember, that's if they have opposite reciprocal slopes, something like, uh, like this, right? 
opposite reciprocal slopes, remember, are those keep flip change slopes. For example, the slope of 3 fifths, the opposite re reciprocal slope would be negative 5 thirds. Or something like the slope of 2, the opposite reciprocal slope would be negative a half, or because we can always put that 2 uh, over a 1. And 7, how would you check to make sure two sides are congruent? They'd have the same distance, again using Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or distance formula, whichever you prefer. This ends the review on the front page of coordinate geometry with slope and distance. Hopefully you've been able to do most of this by yourself, but if not, I've been here to help you uh, get these things done. In the next video, we're going to flip to the back side and actually put some quadrilaterals on a coordinate grid and do some coordinate geometry.